for the past two years. You've heard us talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild before it even had a name, and we'll still be talking about it even after its release. But now, it's time for a new legend to take the throne. Someone whose existence predates Zelda and is recognizable by 99.9% .9 of the population. Welcome to our new series, Inside Super Mario Odyssey. Hello to all my friends at Commonwealth Realm. It's me, Mario. Woohoo! Mamma mia, you're number one. The Nintendo Switch's launch lineup may remain questionable, but the console already has a solid holiday title that is sure to sell gangbusters. Super Mario Odyssey takes us on a journey full of worldly proportions as its general theme is Planet Earth, and how we will be visiting maps inspired by real countries and locations. We'll go over these areas more specifically later in this episode, but first, we need to outline how Super Mario Odyssey represents a glorious return to the open world form of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. Series creator Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto stated in an interview at the Nintendo Treehouse that the reasoning behind the linear designs of Super Mario Galaxy and 3D World is due to their approachability. When we first made Super Mario 64, we realized that the game may have been directed more towards the core gamer and not for the casual gamer. So after we developed 64 and Sunshine, we decided to go back and make Super Mario Galaxy for the casual gamer in mind. Even if Galaxy 1 and 2 and 3D World were geared more towards the casual crowd, Nintendo did not compromise quality for accessibility. Both Mario Galaxies were a spectacle to behold and still retained the hub area that the 3D games are known for. Then there's Mario 3D World. We know we talk a lot of crap about this game when given the chance, but we won't deny that it is still a masterpiece in game design. We only criticize it because, for a 3D Mario game, it didn't feel very 3D despite having 3D in the title. Did we mention 3D? Now it looks like as a direct result of this criticism, Nintendo has finally brought into Mario's horizons again, and have given him the vast open spaces his little Italian heart desires. So what's new? Surely they're not just making a different version of Super Mario 64, are they? No siree Bob! Before Odyssey was even announced, Shigeru Miyamoto said that they're also aiming to change the conventions of Mario, much like they're doing with The Legend of Zelda. We're always challenging ourselves to create something new, so hopefully you'll see a new kind of Mario in about a year or two. Spoiler alert, it was a lot sooner than a year, let me tell ya. It's kind of difficult with Mario, because some of the more important conventions of Mario are based on the approachability and accessibility of the games. When talking about the two words, approachability and accessibility, of Mario, it's important to recognize that Mario 64 was one of the first games of its kind. Rare was it that you could find a game with an open environment and controllable camera back in 1996. This was alien to a lot of gamers, especially in the casual crowd. And then came the problem of Mario Sunshine's mediocre camera, but we won't get into that. It's crazy to think that Super Mario Odyssey is going to be the first open-world Mario game in 15 years since Sunshine. However, we think that Nintendo has learned a thing or two about controls thanks to Galaxy and 3D World. The controls in these games feel even more tight and concise, and it looks like they may have adopted these for Odyssey. We'll be sure to let you know how well the game plays once we get our hands on it at E3 this year. I mean, why wouldn't it be at E3? It's a holiday game, come on! Now let's get to the main course of this episode. The Return of the Open World. Or... world -z. The first question on everyone's mind is if Mario is in our world instead of the Mushroom Kingdoms. The reveal trailer opened with a city resembling New York, and its inhabitants look like normal human beings. You would assume he has made his way back to his hometown of Brooklyn, although the answer is not crystal clear yet. 
Sure, it looks like our world, but there are still signs that it could take place in the Mushroom Kingdom. And I mean, literal signs. The place is called New Donk City. There are question blocks for crossing lights, Diddy Market, Dixie Street, oh, and these platforms that were clearly ripped out of Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's awesome. We're just going to have to wait and see where Mario's new adventure takes him, and we can be sure the answer will be interesting. The first world we've seen of Mario Odyssey came from the Switch reveal trailer in October, resembling Mexican culture, specifically Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. What's interesting is that this place looks to be covered in ice despite it being in a desert. This could hint at the type of enemies we'll see in this world. However, we see shots of areas beyond the village looking more like an ancient Egyptian setting. That sure isn't Yoshi Mario is riding on this time. Just like this lion, we could see a vast array of vehicles or transportation in Odyssey, and we hope Yoshi is one of them. I think it's safe to assume we'll have a whole episode of Inside Mario Odyssey dedicated to transportation. Now this rainforest world is intriguing, because it looks to be the most vast level in the trailer. There is a brief shot where we see Mario walk through two gigantic trees surrounded by shadow. Then we see another very brief shot of him with two enemies. And if you notice on the horizon, it looks like this place will be more of a glorified greenhouse than an actual rainforest. Judging by the metallic works and the robotic residents, this could very well be the case. The final area we see is... What? How does, how does this happen? W what place on planet Earth is this supposed to represent? Have the shrooms finally caught up to Mario? What is this? In all seriousness, it's not like Mario games try to be serious. What the presence of this food world means is that Mario Odyssey's theme isn't as strict as something like Mario Sunshine's. Sunshine had a great variety of levels, but they were restricted to the theme of beaches and tropical areas. Odysseys can go any direction it wants considering our very own planet Earth has its own contrasting areas. One minute you're fighting minuscule tanks in the urban rain, and next thing you're dipping yourself in a pot bowl of stew. Not, not the same thing. Despite their contrasting nature, all of these areas have one thing in common. They are gigantic. These might be the largest Mario levels in existence. Not as big as Hyrule and Breath of the Wild, but certainly bigger than any level 64 Sunshine had to offer. And Sunshine had some big ones. Not to say quality and size are mutually exclusive terms. Nintendo was going to have to do a lot to make sure these are fun levels with lots to do with the day and night cycles, vehicles, LSD trips, you name it. They have also assured us that there will be a hub world in this game akin to Peach's Castle, Delfino Plaza, and the Comet Observatory. We haven't been told what the hub world will be, but we can assume it's New Donk City as we see Mario enter a giant ship, resembling his hat, taking him to the next area representing Mexico. Although we could be wrong, as this level right here resembles that of New Donk City, unless it's now possible to have tank enemies in the hub world. This leaves us wondering how these open areas will operate. Will they change depending on the missions we select? Or will they be incorporated in the game world somehow? The purple coins located in some areas may hint that we'll see a return of the star select screen as collecting red or purple coins were missions in previous 3D Mario games. Judging by the way Mario moves in this trailer, it seems as if most of these worlds will have a level of verticality not seen in any other Mario game before. In New Donk City, Mario can bounce on cars, swing on posts, wall jump buildings, he can jump rope for crying out loud! His new hat powers will also come in handy as they give him an immense boost in agility. Speaking of that, there are these stores located in the city and the Mexico stage called Crazy Cap. We're guessing that these will offer power-ups for his hat that looks to be taken straight out of a rare game. Seriously, the eyes have it. According to this video from Japan, Mario will have some new moves up his sleeve to make him the king of parkour. But that is an episode for another time. And as with that, we give you the following options for the next episode of Inside Mario Odyssey. Would you rather we talk about the controls, or the strange case of New Donk City? Post your answers in the comment section below, or tweet it to us at Common Realm. 
Thank you all so much for watching the very first episode of Inside Super Mario Odyssey. We hope you enjoy this series because we're going to keep it going all year round and we are very excited. Tell us what you want to see in the comments section below. We'd also like to thank Nick's personal symphony for letting us use his rendition of the Super Mario Odyssey theme. Please check out his channel below as he makes some great tracks. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos on Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, the Switch, and more Nintendo franchises. We hope you have a fabulous day, and in the meantime, this has been the Commonwealth Realm, and we will see you guys and gals soon.